Welcome to In the Blue. As always, I'm your host, Corey Frogley, and uh, we've got a great show for you today, all about social reviews and building your online reputation. And for those of you who are moving from the, the uh, yellow page to the digital age world, and for our millennials who were born in the digital age, this is a great show for you because you're going to learn the top secrets of building your online reputation. And we've got an amazing guest today, somebody who has mastered this space and has done nothing but teach this for the last four years. Dr. Leonard Tao started uh, as a dentist practicing in the Pennsylvania area. In fact, still has a practice, his um, Pennsylvania Center for Dental, uh, Dental Excellence in Philly. And Dr. Tao is actually married to a chiropractor. So for those, uh, both our dentists and our chiropractic audience today, this couldn't be a more perfect guest because he absolutely gets how important building that online reputation is. And so his software was acquired by a company called BirdEye. And uh, ever since that happened four years ago, Dr. Tao has been on the road speaking and, and teaching and helping practitioners master this. And we're finding that those who truly engage in this have built this bulletproof reputation and are seeing the fruits of that by uh, new patient after new patient, new patient coming in. And, and Dr. Tao is going to really teach us that. And by the end of this, stay tuned because he's got a special offer for you today that you're not going to want to miss. It's something that's going to help you dramatically improve your, your uh, reputation marketing. So, so Dr. Tao, he likes to go by Lynn. Welcome to the show and thanks for joining us today from uh, beautiful Pennsylvania. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. I look forward to uh, speaking with you and helping the, uh, the listeners and viewers on, uh, on building, as you called it, I love the, the terminology of bulletproof uh, online reputation. Yeah, yeah, and so let's talk about this because you actually use the term social proof. Tell us what that's about, what's social proof? So um, during my seminars, I show a video, um, and it's at the beginning of the first thing I show, basically before I even introduce myself, it's a video of a, uh, an elevator scene on candid camera, and it's a classic ca candid camera scene where, where um, you know, these people walk into the elevator, and there's the, the, the person who is, you know, on the TV, and um, everybody starts turning around, and, you know, all of a sudden, the guy looks around, and everybody's turned to the other, face the rear of the elevator. <laughs> and suddenly the guy turns around as well, you know, and then they go in another guy and, you know, everybody's like turning this way, you know, and the guy yeah. takes off their hat and everybody in the, the guy in the elevator takes off his hat as well. Wow. So it's really following, you know, what everybody else does as well yeah. as, you know, it's, it's using the power of, of people to influence what other people are doing. And nice. you know, everybody nowadays is using the power of online reviews to influence people's you know decision making and right. you know, there's a sign you know when you would drive my drive by mcdonald's you know their sign says over 18 billion served yeah. well mcdonald's food isn't very good you know no. you know it, it, it's fast and it's cheap well fast and cheap doesn't equal good right. but people stop because they see 18 billion served and they go well you know that's why people stop there you know so that's social proof, it's the power of the crowd. So mm -hmm. we are basing decisions or people are basing decisions on what other people who they don't even know, you know, it's anonymous reviews, yeah. or, you know, that's where they're basing decisions on now. And, you know, we call it word of mouth. Word of mouth has been taken online and we call right. it word of mouse yeah. you know, because it's all using your, your mouse to make you know, written, written reviews. Yeah. And, and this is what people are deciding on, you know. So we have practices that have no online reviews and, and they're, they have no online presence and they're not getting those phone calls. Yep. And you have practices that have hundreds of reviews online and they're getting 30 to 40 to 50 new patient calls every month. And they're getting, they're converting thousands of dollars in new patient business because they have lots of reviews online. So yeah. practices that are starting now are so behind the eight ball because they haven't um, taken in the fact that they have to get the online presence that's necessary. Mm. So, so social reviews are getting Google reviews, getting Facebook reviews, showing them online, showing them on your website, 
So when people are searching for you, they know that you are a practice that people recommend to others. Yeah, or, or get recommended to others, right? It's, and I love that because that's the herd mentality. And as much as we like to think ourselves as individualistic, uh, we live in a very herd mentality Correct. Um, yeah. place. And coming again, coming from a practice owner, um, it's something that we recognize pretty early in this game that we weren't getting these reviews just organically. Like people just weren't like, oh, I think I'm going to go onto that practice's website and leave a review. Uh, but once you started talking to patients about it and and asking for some of this stuff, it's it's amazing how much they were willing and be like, oh yeah, of course. So it, it's fascinating that way. And if if uh, if the practitioners listening today or office managers, if you haven't uh, Googled your area, right, your zip code, your city, and just scrolled through those practices who have the most social reviews, I guarantee you that just didn't happen accidentally. They're working hard for those and they're reaping the benefits. So let's dive into wh why are reviews so important? The reason why online reviews are so important is one, they create trust in multiple different ways. And, you know, trust is the way, you know, I do business with patients because patients trust me, they buy from me. You know, mm -hmm. just like when I'm up there speaking to dentists and office managers, if they trust trust me, they they have credibility, they, they buy from me, okay? Consultants, you know, if you're a consultant, you know, look, if they trust you, they buy from you. So trust is kind of what we need. And the reviews allow people to trust you, one. Yeah. Okay, well, if Google trusts you through the online reviews, they rank you higher. Right. So that's probably the most important thing is they create this most important thing we call trust. Mm. Okay? So these doctors who are spending all this money working on you know, paid advertising and SEO, if they're missing this piece, you're telling me that their, their search engine optimization isn't going to be as good for uh, the other guy or, or woman who has more reviews than them. One of the most important slides that I showed during my seminars, and I say, yeah. and I warn them, I say, take a, your camera out and take a picture of this, is a slide that shows basically that reputation enhances the performance of every other type of marketing they're doing. So mm -hmm. if they're doing SEO, which is search engine optimization, if they're doing paid advertising like Google AdWords or Facebook boosting, if they're doing social media, if they're doing retargeting, if they're doing a brand new website, if they don't have reputation, they're wasting yeah. their money. Yeah. Because if someone does a direct mail piece, as many of these new practices do, like startup practices, it's the mm -hmm. first thing they send out and you have no reviews, someone who sees that direct mail piece is not gonna call the office and make an appointment. Right, they're gonna so go look, look, you look have it up, have do reviews. some research before they come, before you start marketing your practice. Mm. So, I mean, I know I wouldn't, I mean, if I go to a restaurant and they have five reviews versus the same one down the street or the same type of restaurant has a hundred reviews, where am I gonna go? I'm gonna <laughs> go to the one that has a hundred reviews before the one that has five reviews. You know, this just happened to me yesterday. I was, I picked up my son from a basketball tournament, right? And, and he was starving. We, we had a, a buddy of his with us and and we walked over and there was a restaurant right there. and, and I, we were just kind of in a hurry. So we went in, we sat down, we ate and it was not a good experience. Like the food was very, very mediocre and I'm kind of a foodie. I love good food. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to pull up my Yelp and see how many stars and ratings this restaurant got. And sure enough, I opened up, I look it up, it pops up three out of five. And I'm like, why didn't I look at that before I sat down? And of course I look right around my area within 0.2 miles, there were four other five-star restaurants. And I made the mental decision, I'm not going back to that restaurant if I'm in this area again. And how much does that same concept translate into healthcare? It translates a lot. And, and you know, we're more apt to, after a bad experience, go online and write about that bad experience than if we had a great experience. And I'll give you a typical real life example that happened to me, similar to you. I went to a restaurant in Toronto after the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry meeting a few years back. And it was the best dining overall experience of my life still to this day. Wow. Okay? 
It was a restaurant called Rogers and Company. Okay, the best restaurant ever. Okay, and it was a steakhouse, and I still talk about it to this day. And I, yeah. I told the waitress, she got the manager and the owner. They came over. I told them I was like with four friends of mine, and they bought us drinks. And they, I said, you know, I'm going to go back to my hotel room and write a review about your off about your restaurants. And yeah. to this day, I still haven't done it. Okay, <laughs> because we as consumers don't write about experiences on our own if it's great because mm -hmm. we need to be prompted we need to be and this is my business we yeah. need to be prompted to do it okay but if that experience was terrible i would be doing it in the restaurant before i even yeah. leave because <laughs> that's that, the way we do business isn't that so crazy that's I mean, the biggest problem that we have and that's the biggest healthy. problem healthcare has is yeah. that a patient will be writing that they're waiting two hours for their dental appointments in the waiting room but they won't tell you how awesome your experience is and that's yeah. the biggest dilemma we have as practitioners. Fascinating. The, the, the psychology of it. I mean, we could, we could talk about that for hours. And so for our, our listeners today, I, I think in today's age, at least I'm hoping most of our audience is aware or becoming more aware of how important this is. So let's dive into the meat of this. Is how, What's the best way to start generating these without feeling salesy and pushy to our, our patient base? Well, you have to... The, the, the easiest way is to ask, but studies show that if you just ask, you're only going to get about a 5% conversion, okay? Wow. Literally. 5%. 5%. So if wow. you ask 100 people, five will do it because one, patients don't know what to do, okay? They don't know what to do. They don't know how to do it, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, and, I, and even in my seminars, when I ask, you know, people in the audience, you know, do you know how to do a Google review? Only about mm -hmm. five or 10 people know how to do it, and that's wow. the honest truth, Okay. So that's a problem. So the second thing is, is, you know, you have to use some type of system, okay? And the best type of systems send out messages via text message because most people have thousands and thousands of unopened emails. Oh, yeah. And again, when I'm in my seminars, I ask people, take out your phones and look how many unopened emails you have. And they have, you know, I have people with 200,000 unopened emails. <laughs> See an email you send them. No. So I think the very best way is to use a system that uh, sends out a, an automated text message after the appointment mm -hmm. because people open their text messages all the time, yeah. you know, and you want to make it very easy for them to simply click a button, takes them to where they need to go and allows them to write the review. So, mm -hmm. but again, if you don't want to use a product like that and there's many of them, okay, bird eye being one of them, but there's a lot of other people that do that. You have to make it a reputation culture in your office. You have to make that commitment. You have to ask, and you have to do a lot of grassroots campaigning to get mm. the people to write the reviews. Yeah. And you can't incentivize the patients. You can't bribe them. You can't right. do any of those things. You can incentivize the team, you know, the staff members, to make them want to continue to ask and ask and, and annoy the patients to do it. <laughs> but you can't incentivize the patients to do that anymore. That's not, that's not allowed. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's literally, you've got to ask. If you don't ask, you know, you've got to use some type of system to do it. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. So is it worth with a team, you know, when we've talked about this in other shows, you know, there, there's certainly incentive programs and, but how do you just make it part of habits, right? We're, we're working on systems that become habit that just happens. Like we don't have to think about it anymore because it happens. And is that what your system does? Is that what BirdEye is designed to do is to, to look at the schedule, pick out some specific patients that we know had a good experience and engage with them? So we're automated to send out to all the patients that came in if they have not been sent a message within a specific time frame that the practice is wants to choose. I recommend within 30 days, but it could be any time frame from no time frame to 180 days. Mm -hmm. um, but what I, the engagement I like is when the patient is done, you know, ask them if they had a great experience, you know, 98% of the time they're going to say yes. Um, and tell them that they're going to receive a text message asking for feedback about their experience and that you look forward to reading what they have to say. So not only do you want them to write something, but you know that now they know that it's going to be read. So they feel like they're going to be listened to. Yeah. Okay. So that's the way that the patient gets engaged and they're more apt to do it. Hmm. So just some statistics, 
we have like a 2% open rate for emails, but we have a 35% open rate for text messages. So That's you can see the different engagement from that That's person. That's a huge difference. Huge difference, okay? Yeah. And then they're asked the question, you know, um, Google just recently changed their rules and they're always changing rules, but they eliminated something called review gating. And mm -hmm. a review gate was something that asked, how is your experience good or bad, okay? And the review gating was good one way and bad the other way. Mm -hmm. It went one direction, they said, yes, it was good, you can go to Google. If it was bad, it went to an internal system. You can't do that anymore, okay? So our system now allows, hey, if it was good, it was green, it goes to Google on the same question, one question. If it's bad, it says contact us directly. So it's, it's not a gate. It's one question that asks that same question. Hmm. So it allows patients to still write something bad on Google, but far often than not, you're going to get a positive review um, that goes to Google and you're gonna get a negative review that still goes back to you. But yeah. Google wants credible businesses. Yeah. And they want businesses that still, you know, look, dentists and chiropractors are not perfect businesses. So you don't wanna get perfect reviews online. So yeah. no business should have 150 five-star reviews with nothing negative. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen that and it does. It makes you wonder, you know, are these real? Did they buy these? Exactly. And that's the most important thing is no business should have five star reviews. And Google's going to start to realize that if you have 150 five star reviews, something is not right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's let's dive into that then, because inevitably, if we're putting in a system like this and we are focusing on it, we're, we're opening ourselves to feedback, which, as you know, we're going to get some sort of negative feedback. And what is the best way to handle that? How do we make the patient feel heard? And but all of a sudden, also maintain that level of uh, reputation online for everybody to see. So the best way to handle something that happens like that is to one, the best advice I can give is don't panic, relax and take a deep breath because yeah. you don't want to write an angry rebuttal because yeah. that can get you into the most trouble ever. Okay. Yeah. My honest advice is to don't worry about a negative review because we're not perfect businesses, okay? Mm -hmm. and to overwhelm them with positive reviews. Focus on getting the positives to overwhelm it, okay? So I have about 1,600 plus reviews online, okay, across all the different websites. I have probably 85 negative reviews. So I have my fair share of negatives. I'm from New York. <laughs> I live in Philadelphia. I don't have a filter, you know? So it yeah. happens. Um, it happens that I have some negative reviews. Um, I get met plenty of positives to overwhelm those negatives. Um, I don't love responding to negative reviews online because you have an upset patient and if you respond, it can start a, a war of words online. Mm -hmm. So my best suggestion from just doing this for as long as I've been doing it is to call the patient offline. Mm -hmm. Try and contact them, try to work it out online, uh, offline. Offline. Many times they will then remove the review or change the review. And it's happened to me many times that way. Wow. Okay. If Did that you ask for that, or do you just no, leave it, it in their ball court? You leave it and they take it down themselves. Wow. So I never say to them, please take the review down. They do it on their own. Nice. I think that's important for our, our audience to hear that because, um, you do. You kind of want it to be a natural thing. You don't want them thinking you're calling them trying to resolve the concern just so that they'll take down the negative review. Correct. So, so you get you 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 fix their problem or or at least address their concern. A lot of times they will take the review down or at least change the star rating. Mm -hmm. Now, if a month goes by and you can't, they don't reach you. They don't call you back. Then you can put a response online. You know, I'm sorry you had this experience, so please always reply that I'm sorry. And, and then say, you know, please contact the office to discuss your concerns. Hmm. So and you're saying least, about a month after? Yeah. You don't want to do it too soon. You don't want to wait too long. But about a month later, if you have not been able to have them call you back, then it's okay to respond. I still don't respond. I just let it lie because I don't want there to be a – uh, any percolation going on, but that's, you can reply if you want at that point. Well, we know in our audience that we have people like you that 
I'm okay if people don't like me. Everybody doesn't have to like me. And then we also know there's people in the audience that like they can't stand the thought of somebody not liking them. So it's it's probably those those of you who are like that that are, it's gonna keep you awake at night thinking of these people that don't like you. What's your advice to those guys? You know what? You can't please everyone. And and if I I have specific examples I show during my seminars where that people have responded against my advice and it's really backfired on them. So I would just tell them to just take my advice and, and let, let the, the, the little monsters lie because it can turn into this big monster that you don't, you lose control. So, you know, you can't please everyone. Just remember that. And, yeah. and if you are not careful, it can really backfire on you. So the, you're not going to please everyone and, and online, especially um, take it offline. Don't go online and do it. And if you do, just just put a generic response on there, um, and just leave it be, and wait for them to to make the ne the next move. I, I think that's solid advice. Excellent. So you come up with some very specific do's and don'ts of reputation marketing. What what are those? So so let's start with the don'ts because they're easy. So don't sue patients for a bad review. That I mean, there was a gynecologist who just sued. Um, a patient in New York who left a bad Yelp review for a million dollars and that completely backfired. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So don't sue patients. You don't want to pay for reviews. You don't want to incentivize patients for reviews. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to own the reviews. So you don't want to have copyright ownership over those and find patients for reviews. I mean, there's a lot of things that you, these are things you don't want to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to violate the terms of services of any of these review sites. So make sure you know the terms and services of those, of those review sites. So those yeah. are just some really easy don'ts. Don'ts, right? yeah. So do's, I mean, you do want to make sure you make reputation a culture in your office. So sit down with your team, tell them that reputation is super important, um, and make sure that they know that people are going to be like grading them on their performance, okay? So make sure they understand that they're going to be watched and, and reported on, okay? Um, you can incentivize your team to ask for and and – Mention to the patients that they're going to be, you know, watched and um, and asked. So you can incentivize the team, but not the patients. Okay. Right. Um, do do ask, 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 and ask. Okay. I still recommend using some type of service. There are many of them out there. Do use the power of the phone, which is text messaging, not email. Yeah. So I mean, those are all big things, but understand that the reputation is the most important aspect of your business that you need to focus on nowadays because the patients or actually I should say the people, because remember people searching for you are not patients yet. Right. So we want, we're focusing on the people that are searching for you here because if they're patients, the reputation is, is not as important. It's the people that are searching for a, a dentist or a chiropractor. Or that's our target audience here. Yeah. So, the people that are searching for you are the ones you're looking at. So they're going to be looking at the reviews. Look, when someone says, who's your dentist or who's your chiropractor? Oh, it's Dr. Leonard Tao. They're going to look you up. Oh yeah. You have to convince them to come in and the reviews are the first thing that they see. Cool. Because they're on your Google My Business page. So you've got to make the best first impression there. How often would you recommend as a team that you guys are actually talking about your reviews and maybe even pulling up your website to review? How, how often should the office be doing that? Well, so you should be any system that you should be using should at least be monitoring them for you and alerting, to you, alerting you when you get a new review. And, you know, hopefully a lot of these practices, you know, especially using your service, you, you're analyzing all their data. So they should be you know, talking about the data. So they should be having some type of huddle. So when they get a new review, good or bad, they should be discussing it with their teams. So this should be a, you know, a couple time a week process. Hey guys, we got a great review. This is what the person wrote. Hey guys, we got a bad review. Let's discuss this. Yeah. So this should be part of their daily routine where they're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of their practice. Cool. You know? And just as an example, this wasn't necessarily a review I got, but my associate had an issue where she accidentally cut uh, the tongue of a patient that was very uh, uh, not a good patient in the chair. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't in the practice, but the husband called me because he was concerned. And he okay. left some feedback for me that the my associate and my dental assistant were chit-chatting during the appointment. And mm -hmm. the patient thought that they were distracted because they were chit-chatting. Now, that was the mm -hmm. patient's experience. That's, I wasn't yeah, there. The husband perception. wasn't there. Sure, sure. Perception. 
So I had a team meeting yesterday and I discussed this perception, which is just like a review to me because that was what the feedback that was left for me. So I sat down with my team and we, during our team meeting, we discussed this. So it would just be like the person wrote a review and we had this discussion. Absolutely. So this is what needs to be discussed at the huddle as well is what the person wrote so that everybody knows what everybody's being discussed. Same exact thing with these reviews. Yeah. No, I love it. Love it. Solid. Well, let's let's uh, talk real quickly about what an office can do. If you're if, if we have an audience today with listeners who they're not using any type of service, they're still pretty new. Where do they start? Like what what can we provide them today that they can implement today or Monday and start really tackling this important topic? So, you know, first and foremost, and I said in the beginning is they have to decide, they have to make the commitments to make reputation something important in their practice. Okay. When they make the commitments, then they can start moving forward. OK, then they have to you know, claim, make sure the Google page is claimed, make sure it's optimized because that's going to help them rank higher. They also have to obviously learn the proper verbiage to ask for a review. So that's the first thing they have to do. OK, then they have to decide if they just want to focus on asking to see how effective that's going to be. I think they're going to get a little, you know, frustrated with the results that they're going to get. Um, and then they can reach out to many of the services that are out there. Like I said, BirdEye is just one of them. There are other ones that are similar. They don't do as much as BirdEye does. Um, I don't like making this a, a BirdEye sales pitch, but you know, BirdEye definitely does a little bit more than the other services on the market. Um, but there's other services that provide similar, similar review services that we provide, um, but they don't have to use BirdEye. They can use any of the review services. Make sure it does text messaging. Uh, make sure it's not just a link in the message there has to be more than just a link because then the patients have to log in logging in is something that the patients don't necessarily want to do or, or know how to do they don't remember their passwords right. you know, our service doesn't force them to remember passwords we log in a lot of times for them mm -hmm. so um but they have to make that commitment to make reputation a priority in their practice they have to fix the customer service because if their customer service isn't very good they're going to they're going to get a lot of bad reviews yeah. because if you look at the reviews online that are negative it's always that the customer service isn't very good. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Well, for, for our audience, you know, BirdEye is one of those, it's a solid company. And uh, we wouldn't have Lynn on our show today if it wasn't uh, a service that we actually have vetted and, and is providing great service. So, Lynn, for those of our audience, because they are our audience, you've got a special for them today. What is that? So, um, regular price for BirdEye is normally, um, it's two, $250 a month. For 12 months or um $2,400 annually because we have an, a, a year commitment and we do more than just generate the reviews there's a lot more to our service than what i just presented um but for the audience listeners we have um a, a, a special and it's um 200 a month so they get 50 dollars off wow. or two thousand dollars for the year so it's 400 dollars off um wow. and um the one thing i would say is they that they can go to the website and and um ask for a demo to be done um, when they do suggest that the the leads are split up between a couple of different people i do get a majority of them but i don't get all of them they will be able to get in touch with me but if they don't get me have them ask for me because i'm the only one that's able to provide that pricing nice. through bird eye um, so if they don't get me or they get one of the reps just say hey i was directed to speak to land and then they'll forward that lead to me that's the most important thing about that pricing cool. is they've got to come through me to get that Beautiful. so if they, if they get a, an email from another representative just say hey i was told to ask for land they should forward that information to me then cool so whether you're watching our video live or you're re-watching this on many of our social media posts click the link below in the description in the video description and caption you'll see the link and uh, so even if this is months from now, still get to Lynn because he will work this deal. And I know that the caption, the link is Dental One. But again, for our chiros, for our PTs, for our medical providers, if, if you still go through Lynn, he will still give you this. this and, and Corey, you know, you know, they can also I they can also contact me directly. I'm happy to give them my direct contact information. And that's also just I. Many people contact me. They call me directly. They can email me directly. I don't have a problem providing that information. So beautiful. Okay. So my, my my email is is drlentau drlentau at 
birdeye.com, B-I-R-D-E-Y-E.com. That's my direct email. Perfect. And then my cell phone number, again, people call me all the time. Um, I'm, I'm on the Eastern You're time. a brave man, but here yeah, we no, go. I, hey, I get people call me at, you know, I'm up till like one o'clock in the morning Eastern time. So uh, no problem. Um, it's 215-292-2100. And that's free to anybody to call me. My patients have it. My clients have it. I'm no problem offering that. So perfect. Well, and, and again, this is why we have Lynn on the show, because this is the commitment that Blue IQ likes to work with are those who are here for us. You know, I mean, that's your direct line. This guy services over personally 4,000 uh, docs and as a company, 8,000 docs. This is not just a mom and pop shop. This is a guy that's willing to bend over backwards to take care of his, his, uh, his clients. So take advantage of this, guys. Uh, your reputation, can you put a price on that? I mean, good grief, $200 a month. Can you really put a price on that? So I always say, when I, because I have my own podcast that I do, and I always yeah. close my podcast out with your reputation matters. So that's why, that's the most important thing, so. Yeah, awesome. Well, the data stands behind it, and that's what Blue IQ is all about, is bringing you tools of scalability and helping you guys grow and thrive in your marketplace and dominate your market. And that's why we're here, and that's why we're bringing you incredible guests like uh, Dr. Tao. So, again, thank you for being with us today. Uh, you've got all of his contact information. Flood his inbox. Uh, text him. Uh, as we all know, that's a great way to get a hold of people. We are here in the blue every Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. And uh, again, love having you with us. Share this with your friends. Share this with your family members. Uh, get your reputation rocking uh, in the blue. We'll be back next week. Have a great weekend.